Hi guys, in this series of videos we're going to be looking at how to play ten songs uh, with three new chords. We've got a G major, a C major, and a D major. And this is how we're going to play some really cool songs um, with just these three chords. The D we've covered before in the previous set of videos, um, how to play three songs with E, A, and D. So if you want to know how to play that D chord, check out the previous set of videos and we'll get you playing onto the record with those. But in this one, we're going to be focused on a lot of songs which are in the key of G. Which means that these songs are going to start on G, and also um, the other chords that we use with them, C and D, sort of fit in the family of, of G. When we start on a G chord, a C and a D sound really good when we play after it. So we're going to be covering how to play these, how to change between them, and a couple of different options you've got with these chords. Um, so this is the normal, standard way you will play a G major chord on any guitar. We have your middle finger on the thickest E string at the third fret, which should be where you have a dot on the top of your guitar. Some don't, this one doesn't for example, but most standardized guitars do. That's where your middle finger goes. Your first finger goes um, on the second fret of the A string. And then your third finger is all the way down on the thinnest E string at third fret again, so on that dotted fret. And if all those three are right on the tips of their fingers, um, some people have a habit of uh, flattening off their third finger when they go for um, this G chord, but I need you to make sure that they're on the tips of their fingers so that they all ring out great should sound like that. So this is your standard G major chord from another angle. A couple of important points to note from this alternate angle is you want to make sure each finger is at this side of the fret and not at this side. So your first finger at second fret wants to be right over here. Your middle finger at third fret on the thickest E string wants to be right over this side of the fret and not over here. That way it might not ring out at this side and we don't have to press down as hard when we're at this side of the fret to get it to ring out and they're nicely on their tips so again we have this claw hand kind of idea happening my fingers are kind of shaped like this as I'm pressing the finger down and exactly the same for the third finger it's on its tip and my little finger rather than kind of being down here or just kind of distracting or sometimes helping push down this one it's just right at the side right next to that third finger, kind of gaining some strength from it. And that's your G major chord, so again, one, two, three, little finger next to it. And that's your standard G major chord. So as I say, that's the standard way to play a G. Um, there's another option that we can do with this G chord that will make a lot of your changes and a lot of these songs, one, a lot easier, but also actually sound more like the record as well. Uh, and that's by playing it with your little finger on as well, with your fourth finger. So from your standard G, we move your third finger up a string, but at the same fret. And then we have your little finger, your pinky, on the thinnest E string where your third finger was. So we've moved your third finger up and replaced it with your little finger. And that sounds like this. Now to my ear, that actually sounds like a more pleasant and nicer sounding G. Compare it to the old way. I prefer the sound of this one. It's a tiny bit more work because you are using your little finger for the first time. However, this is going to make changing to the D major chord that we've already covered, as I say in a previous video. So if you're not, I'm not going to go into this D too much. Um, but make this little triangle shape with your first finger at second fret on the third string so that's the G and uh, middle finger on the second fret on the top E string and then your third finger creates a little triangle shape and, and that's your D major chord as I say this gets used a lot with a G and if we use this Noel Gallagher method which is uh, what I nickname it with your two little fingers here this way of playing G I'm gonna nickname the Noel Gallagher of Oasis fame uh, G. We keep the third finger down and we have an anchor finger which was really important in the first batch of videos that I made. Um, it really helps a change 
if you can keep one finger down all the time. In this case, it's your third finger, which isn't the strongest of fingers when, you, when you're first starting off. Kind of your first finger is the stronger one. But it should help. Keep that third finger down, and you can change to a D chord. In my opinion, much easier. And in my experience, much easier for a, for a lot of absolute beginners um, than going for the standard G and then having to lift all fingers off and trying to find your D chord from there. This gives you a point of contact and it makes that change a lot, lot easier. So your alternative G major chord, this is your standard one. Third finger moves up one string and your little finger, which was right next to it a second ago, goes on the thinnest E string. Uh, so your little finger's on the, little, the thinnest string and your third finger is on the next string up, which is your second string. First and second finger are exactly the same. They're where they were before, and everything on its tips. If these two fingers, the temptation is going to be to hit them flat like this. Um, if they're going flat like this, it's unlikely that these top two strings are going to really ring out at all. We need them on the tips of their fingers. Everything in this claw hand shape. 90 degrees to the fretboard and with your little finger and third finger as close together as they reasonably can be and that's your Noel Gallagher style G major chord um, your third chord that you're going to need for this series of uh, songs is a C chord which the standard way of playing it is like this here we have your first finger on the second string, so that's the B string at first fret. That note sounds like that. We have your middle finger on the D string at second fret. And then your third finger, third fret, so the dotted fret one more time, uh, on the A string. And this one we also, it's good at, especially at this stage, if you, you know, this is the first chord you've ever learnt, don't worry about this too much, but if you, you've played a few songs now with a few chords, strum that C chord from the, the uh, fifth string. Don't play the thickest E string, it can sound a little C chord sounding like that, that's why. And if you notice on the diagram, there's a little cross on that string. Uh, remember these diagrams are kind of written upside down, but um, so the, the cross will be on the bottom here, but this is actually your bottom string because it's the lowest one. And we don't want to play this string on the C chord, otherwise it sounds like this, rather than sounding like this. Or on the D chord, where we want to strum from the, uh, from the D string rather than hitting the thickest string. That will make it sound a lot better, especially if you're on the tips of your fingers as well. If your fingers are quite flat like this, it might sound a little like that, okay? so. Right on the tips of your fingers, kind of like a kind of like a claw hand, the way I like to describe it for want of a better term. That's your D chord, and then we had the C chord, like this. For your C major chord, really making sure that each finger is right on the tip. Um, your first finger, most definitely. Otherwise, this thinnest E string here will not ring out if it's kind of on the side or anything like this. So we need it right on the tip, again not at this bad side where that one won't ring out either, it needs to be at this side of the fret and then that first finger will sound fine. Middle finger and third finger as well, both at this side of the fret and that's how we get your C chord to, to sound great. It can be tricky, it's the first chord we've gone for with uh, covering three frets E or A only kind of cover these first two, so everything might have been a bit of a squash before, and now we're really spread out. If you're really struggling, you can use a capo so that your frets get closer together, move for, moving the C chord further up the fretboard, but there's no really other way of getting this chord to sound great other than doing it little and often and making sure that your C chord sounds great. Okay. We've got a couple of options with uh, how to play this C chord, as well as the standard way of doing it. This is going to be a very similar way to ha the option we had on the G, so the Noel Gallagher method, as I like to describe it. Um, when we play this C, that's a big change from both the G and the D. 
which um, the G2AD was quite a big change as well when you're first getting used to it. Um, but what I would like to introduce to you is a way to play a C, which is a C add 9, uh, which again sounds really great for a, a lot of these songs. This is actually the C that will be used in this song. This isn't a easy cheating beginner's C. This is a C that is used in songs because it sounds great. Um, after you've done a few songs at this stage, I would like you to be able to change between a full normal G to a full normal C and the D. But to be able to do this in songs and get the sound of the record, this method is actually really used uh, an awful lot, especially with these three chords in this sequence. So we have a G chord with the Noel Gallagher method. Play this for, with me now. So three, two, one. This is your Noel Gallagher G. Um, then to play your C chord, we just move your first finger and your middle finger down one string. And don't play the thickest E string. And it sounds like this. This is your Noel Gallagher C chord. And it's not just used for Oasis songs, it's going to be used in, in lots of songs. For example, we're going to be able to play uh, Free Falling with this um, chord change. And then to a D. And that third finger is going to stay down the whole time, which as I say is going to make this a whole lot easier for you. But I just want you to know exactly what chords we're playing here. Um, also for another song that we're going to be going for, Sweet Home Alabama. This is the, the proper way to do those chords, even to do the riff. That's, that's how the chords are made. It's not actually a full C. So really, really useful stuff. And um, so, yes, just as a little bit more explanation as to, to why this is a, a C chord, because your fingers seem in totally different places, right, to where they were before. These two notes are actually the same, where your first and second finger are on a Noel Gallagher C chord, as to where they are on a normal C chord, but with your second and third fingers on them. They're the same two notes regardless. But this just keeps it in a really similar state to the G and the C. And then when we move to a D, we have a third finger anchor. So as I say, I'd really like you to uh, use this method for the most of these uh, songs, unless I tell you otherwise, because it really gets the, the sound of the record. But after these videos, after you sort of progress on, um, please be able to change between a normal G and a normal C and a normal D, because that's um, also fundamental to doing songs that don't begin on a G, that aren't in the key of G. Um, and that's going to be everything that you'll need for this set of videos. We'll cover strumming patterns and everything like that. But fire away and, and choose the song that you want and I'll see you there.